What's raging gamers? Welcome to Rage Quit Video Game Talk Show. How you doing, Henrik the Wreck? What's up, what's up? I'm doing great, as always. How about yourself, Chris? Man, everything's good. I am enjoying this new time change where we can actually mm. get to do things outside. I know that this is a game talk show. We don't necessarily want to touch grass all the time, right? Right? <laughs> Sometimes we want to be couch potatoes. We want to play endless hours of gaming. But hey, let's get this show rolling with a bang. And we got a lot of amazing viral content that's been cooking up, you know, revolving around all things gaming and los angeles lakers d'angelo russell claims his killer crossovers and slick footwork on the court are all thanks to a video game do you have in mind what that video game might be i'll give you guys a second as i get ready to showcase this video because you might see it after you watch d'angelo russell's take let's go ahead and take a look you remember tekken Hell yeah. The dude the that Eddie? was on there that's like Eddie. He used to do the uh the, the used Jamaican to look guy. drunk and Hell shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was how I used to like try to look it was like a decept like a, it was deceptive. Yeah, that. Yeah. So but that that gave me that. Like when I would see him fight and look like he ain't wow 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 wow. <laughs> that's how I want to play on the court. Uh, 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 hey, it's a gimmick. Go grab oh sham got uh, you know what I mean? Like Wow for real. Ask, bro, that's crazy because that really tied that makes so much sense about it. Yeah. If you know, you know, <laughs> if you, know you know, bro. If you know, you know. Like he says, that's a great inspiration right there. Yeah. Who would have <laughs> thought, you know, perfecting combos in Tekken would apply to the court in NBA? I think that is so freaking cool. And obviously, we got comments surrounding this viral clip. And the first one here says... I see it, though. He'd be looking oh. drunk as hell with the ball. He might be looking <laughs> drunk, but I know Nikola Jokic on the Denver Nuggets, he looks like he stepped on a, a tack on the ground or maybe someone <laughs> threw a bunch of marbles around. Like, he looks drunk on the court. Daniel <laughs> Russell looks like Eddie from Tekken. The next comment that we got here is, Draymond's basketball inspiration is also Tekken. <laughs> yeah, he does get some of those fighting skills. Matter of fact, you ain't lying, but maybe it might not be Tekken. Maybe it's Mortal Kombat. There are some insane fatalities. Finish him. <laughs> yeah, finish him. <laughs> and last, <laughs> quote, I owe you apology. I wasn't familiar with your game. So see, listen, video games, everything does apply after all. But hey, listen, uh, this next clip is another sports icon. He goes by the name of Joe Burrow. You might recognize him as the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. Well, he volunteered at a local kitchen that rescues perishable items from nearby groceries and farms. And so what he does is, or at least this organization, they turn fresh meals for those who are hungry. And I think that is so freaking cool that Joe Burrow does spend some of his time with his local community in Cincinnati. But hey, this is a video game talk show after all. And why am I bringing up Joe Burrow? Well, he was asked by the Cincinnati Magazine uh, his top five characters in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. And if you don't know anything about Joe Burrow, he is a diehard fan of Super Smash. But you might be um, quite enlightened by what he had to say for his top five because this would not be mine, but... For Joe, it works for him. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. What are your top five favorite Smash characters? Uh, Cinnamon World 1, Ness is probably the way my second theory. Um, Byleth, and then I've been using Inkling lately, and I've been using Donkey Kong lately. My man, Donkey Kong. <laughs> so you you approve of this list? Is that like on I, a grade from A, B, C, D? And uh, are we gonna go as far as an F? What you, you know? Feeling? I can I can tell he does play the game because he's trying to experiment. He's not just doing the vanilla character selection of. But like, experiment doesn't necessarily you know. mean it's a good top five. Oh, I mean, if you're gonna say a good top five, I mean, yeah, if he can, like top if five. He can, if he can show up with that top five and do really well. And that's a good top five. Okay, fair enough. Well, we definitely got comments <laughs> around this video. First one here is Jameis Winston probably uses game and watch. I didn't quite understand that, but 2,626 people did. If I'm missing Game something, watch is underrated. if I'm missing the joke, please comment during this live show. I need to know the joke with this whole Jameis Winston thing. Second one is. Incineroar, come on, Shiesty. <laughs> Incineroar, yeah. <laughs> Incineroar, oh damn, I just 
butchered it. You de- blonde moment. <laughs> you got roasted yourself. <laughs> I know, exactly. He was quick with the answers. That's my quarterback. And, you know, yeah, yeah you know, you got to give it to him. He was very quick with choosing his top five. But since this is Chris Collins and Henrik the Wreck, we're going to showcase the roster right now. And just real quickly, is there something that sticks out to you? I mean, for myself personally, I remember growing up, everybody wanted to fight like hell for Toon Link or a young link. I mean, <laughs> I can't really speak on ultimate cuz the lack of gameplay on my end is just very low. I was a oh, melee go, and N64. I Lady just Nintendo games. Uh, it's not that. <laughs> it's just it's just not in my vernacular. <laughs> eh, fair enough, fair enough. But what you vibe for with? me? For me it's always been my number 1 is Captain Falcon. Yeah, you know, Captain Falcon Undefeated. is a fun gameplay. But you know what? It, it, it does feel kind of odd. You know, some people would argue that Kirby should have been up there, right? I mean, isn't that always True. in everybody's top five? So, I mean, a little that's questionable. also because this game is made by the guy who made Kirby. So, uh, oh, oh, he has okay. a little bit of a bias towards that character. I mean, <laughs> cool character. Don't get me wrong. Kirby's definitely in my top five. <laughs> it's all very, very strong. And hey, you gotta love it, gamers. But... Let's go on to the next video because this is just totally insane because, you know, for some friends, a night on the town can bring out the best in us, but for some, it takes getting that tattoo to truly level up their experience. And hey, who says gamers don't know how to commit to their passions, even if it's permanently inked? Oh, my Lanta. This is crazy. I feel like I know a homeboy that would definitely do this. Are you this ambitious? Let's see what's good. You know, it's funny. You said, I know someone who would do this. I know someone who would do this. I, I know someone who did a tattoo of Pickle Rick at the height of that meme. So legendary, <laughs> legendary. And I know a lot of people wanted to comment around this video. Uh, the first comment we got here is more like short night. Lol. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> no regrets. No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> Instant classic of a film. Uh, she asked if you're into anime. Okay, this threw me off completely. Is this what we're now telling our future lovers? Or if you're like, you know, single like myself, your boy Chris Collins, are we really saying that about Fortnite? Like, that's an anime? And are we using that as a tactic to kind of swindle over the ladies over for a, you know, a nice a, a nice night out? <laughs> I don't know. I've never really, you know, like correlated anime with Fortnite outside of the collaborations never. they've done, you know, but that's about it. <laughs> hey, you gotta love it for the 200 hearts, you know, on that comment that everybody is vibing with it, I guess. That's very, very funny. <laughs> hey, but, you know, the Academy Awards were last Sunday, and the reason we're referencing the Academy Awards is, you know, Ludwig Gorson, he is a composer. He won his second Oscar award. Congrats to the man for winning for his soundtrack in Oppenheimer. If you haven't seen the film, it's really, really well done. Killian Murphy is an amazing actor and truly deserved winning Best Actor at the Oscars. But, you know, there was a moment, you know, where they do receive, you know, the award and he wanted to thank his parents. But it didn't stop with just thanking the parents for giving him instruments. He also said this, and we're going to showcase it for you, the gamers. Uh, Christopher Nolan is your idea to use a violin in the, in the score and it, it allowed me to work and collaborate with my wonderful wife and acclaimed violinist Serena Gorenson and to my parents up there thank you for giving me guitars and drum machines instead of video games thank you <laughs> I mean you can play video games and do you know instrumental plays why, why is this always the stereotype around <laughs> video games why the stab still to this day has anyone ever asked him you know like i've heard questions on variety about going hey man you're so amazing in television and film and music have you ever thought about broadway hey have you ever considered doing composing work for a video game there are some legendary soundtracks i mean have you not listened to yeah. you know final fantasy any of the kind of music that they're giving out um, Look at I, what Mick Gordon does for uh, all the games that he's done. You know, my most iconic he's done is probably Doom. Exactly. I mean, there are a lot of legendary scores within video games. So to kind of make that kind of subtle jab is pretty funny, considering that I'm going to just throw this out on a whim. Watch him get offered a deal to be featured <laughs> in a video game, and then we're going to be playing the same video from 
on the main <laughs> stage of the Oscars, and we're all going to be clowning you. But let's go ahead and read the comments around this video, because the first one says, I play guitar and drums, but in Fortnite Festival, <laughs> felt this. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Uh, second one we got here is, I got a friend that plays games and guitar. Just say you can't multitask, little bro. Weird flex, but okay. And last, it's not that deep, to be honest. Someone tell them about League of Legends world soundtracks. I mean, they do have those competitions online where people are literally debating whether or not, you know, like artists, for example, they compete to even get their music featured in those esports tournaments. I mean, I, one of the bands I can think of is, uh, you know, Telly Smith from The Word Alive that had that legendary soundtrack he was partnering up with other artists. And we also got Zach O'Man Gaming that wants to clown at him. And he says, I mean, it's not a composer's work, but Tony Hawk's soundtrack is goaded. You know, true. It's We can't really make that comparison. It's a, it's a bit <laughs> of a stretch. But we do have the opportunity with video games to hype up the next great artist and think mm -hmm. about there's an a, a incredible wall street journal that kind of dropped just before the show went live and they were talking about how fortnite festival has now offered the opportunity including roblox for example where artists are now considering premiering their own music in video games instead of going to spotify or tiktok that could be potentially banned here in the united states because the house just voted to prohibit, even though yeah. some politicians will say <laughs> that it's not a ban. No, it is a ban. But the reason why I'm bringing up TikTok is, Henrik, Universal Music Group has been going after TikTok for so long. And now it's mm -hmm. making it even harder for up-and-coming artists to even be able to promote their own music, especially if you're tied to some of these major, major record labels and they don't like the idea that you're remixing their music so yeah. you get this opportunity to showcase in front of a gigantic audience that's all over live service gaming like epic games like fortnite or the likes of roblox it's an amazing opportunity and so to completely shit on video gaming's shame on you and i'm gonna laugh so hard <laughs> when you compose a video game within your incredible we're resume. watching incredible we're always watching you <laughs> always watching always watching but hey <laughs> we want to thank you guys for always joining us live on rage quit video game talk show and again get involved join the conversation because we want to hear from you the gamers but hey henrik are you ready to rock and roll you ready to get this show oh. rocking and rolling <laughs> absolutely it's time to rage baby it's time to rage baby let's get it Woo! Hey everyone, this is Pause or Repeat. Here we figure out whether a game is really worth your time and money. Today's game is Skull and Bones. Skull and Bones has been in development hell for a long time at this point. With it finally out, was it worth the wait for the first quadruple A game? To start, let's go over the gameplay and find out. The gameplay of Skull and Bones centers mostly around your ship. You'll dock your ship, run around and talk to NPCs to accept quests, obtain upgrades for your ship, and more. When you're ready to leave, you're free to explore the waters, but you'll mostly want to complete quest objectives. A lot of times you'll need to down a number of a certain type of ship or bring back certain supplies. You can harvest some raw materials from the shorelines, but a big focus is on ship combat. The ship combat involves you steering around other ships, shooting your cannon, and dropping their health until you are able to board or just outright sink their ships. To board a ship, you get closer to it and when the option is available, you'll then throw grappling hooks to grab onto it. A short cutscene plays with your crew reeling in the enemy ship and then you are rewarded with the spoils. So overall, you'll mostly be aiming for ship upgrades or cosmetics. But how's the story? The story has you playing a no-name pirate who survives a terrible shipwreck at the start of the game. The ship is attacked by the British Navy, and you are therefore on the run from them. You gather what resources and crew you have to deliver a letter from the previous ship captain, and from there you are tasked with increasing your infamy, your goal being to become a pirate feared and respected by all. So to put simply, it's a pirate game, and your experience fills in the blanks for the story. Though it being a live service game, that could change in the future if the game survives. But now the question still stands. Pause or repeat? Alright, I do love me a good sea shanty. My coworkers can attest to this. Sometimes I'll be working on some stuff at work and I'll just have some sea shanties on in the background. 
And then people come in, they're like, what are you, what, what are you listening to? What is this? But for some <laughs> reason, this game just didn't make me feel like a pirate, which is unfortunate. But it, I, that's just what I got from it. I'm, I'm curious, though. What do you think about this game? From yeah, I'm just wondering who spiked the rum at Ubisoft. <laughs> I mean, come on now. We spent 10 years on this quadruple A game, and they have zero sword combat and shipboarding, matter of fact. And so how do you become a pirate if you can't even step on land, okay? And then you want to go on these crazy treasure hunts. And don't get me wrong. The graphics are amazing. It looks awesome. But my problem with this is, is the fact that we keep labeling these live service games to be at a threshold with $70 when it comes to these AAA single player one-off games. This truly isn't the case. And you're seeing the effect happening in real time. We're seeing Suicide Squad kill the Justice League. Does anybody even remember that? Oh yeah, it came out this year. It's already on sale on Steam for $40. And we're also getting reports, Henrik, that potentially for Epic Game Store, their spring sale, Skull and Bones is already getting uh, devalued down to $45. And I'm starting to think that- It's not that a good look. It's not a good look. And I'm, I'm really starting to think that a lot of live service games, instead of trying to go all out, and I get it, they spent 10 years on this game, but guess what? Elden Ring's DLC spent two years on it, and look at the massive success that they're bringing in with you know their DLC. And I think if you want to win over a large fan base, you got to kind of feed it to them minute. You know, you got to give it to a base at maybe $40. And then if I'm really intrigued with season one and season two, and you want to expand my experience, then I will fork in the next $30 and potentially another $30. If you guys really, truly deliver for what gamers want, but it's just, I got to hand the floor I, back to you. Cause I know I, I'm taking up really, the airwave time, but I would really say, you know, maybe $40 for a game like this is even maybe too much considering one of the big problems that this game is having is that it's flopped. Like at this point, so many people have a bad opinion of it and there's not a whole lot of redeeming qualities for the gameplay for it to be worth the full price. I'd say let alone $40. Helldivers 2 at $40 was a bit of a different story because there was a lot of passion behind the, the game development and even yeah, but now, they would like argue the that they put really, a lot really of passion care. in it too. I mean, they you kept the lane in but, because they wanted like, to perfect it. The, you know? the, the implementation was not there for this game. So I'd say I, $30, maybe even $20 is how much it really should be to just get people in the door. And well, maybe it sounds then, like we're clowning them, but I got to say, like, Skull and Bones is still very, very fun when it comes to the naval combat and the oh, yeah, fascinating yeah. settings. It's it just, can get a little about, repetitive. But, but it's lacking an identity. It's not really separating yeah. itself from the herd. You know, it's like we we feel like we've already had these kind of games. And, you know, and I was, you know, kind of suggesting $40 because when you look at the premise of things, and I think even Suicide Squad is on a level is kind of figuring that out. Just think about it like this. Assassin's Creed, Black Flag, and Sea of Thieves. You combine the cost of both those games together, that's $40. <laughs> what does that mm -hmm. offer? Yep. More gameplay and more opportunities to do everything uh, yeah. you expected and, and in that Skull and Bones. So that's the it's problem. Like <laughs> Ubisoft made Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and in Black Flag, not only was the ship combat and gameplay just fun and engaging, but you also get to actually board other enemy ships. As opposed to in this game, like I was saying in the video, these hooks go out, your crew reels in the ship, and then a cutscene plays, and then a screen pops up with <laughs> exactly. all the loot you got. Well, and as I'm opposed to in Black Flag, you actually jumped on the ship, you had sword combat with the other crew, and it was fun, you know? And I'm missing that in this game. Well, yeah, and you know what's an uh, inc like incredibly dumbfounded moment around this whole idea around a live service game is that it's incredibly easy to meet gamers in the open sea, but then there's currently no chat system. How do you not offer that? Like, that's wild. And then they'll give you, like, these stupid-ass little button, you know, mashing moments where you can say certain dialogue. It completely kills the overall experience. Yeah. And I'm just and so like, shocked that they From they one sell perspective, that maybe, maybe they did that to prevent people from being really toxic because that is a thing that could potentially happen. You know, rather than teabagging another ship, you just come, you throw slurs and, and profanities at them instead. But... Like, that's kind of the point of a game like this is, you know, like, 
It's live. It's live. You're you can't. Pirate. You can't be you worrying about the. You can't worry about the game development process. About hey, are we worried that a few bad apples are gonna say a, a few naughty words? You know, on the open sea, you cannot. If that is the case, you know, infatuate yourself to make that a concern. You really got to really open up the world and make it so you can actually meet up with other pirate kingpins, you know, build mm -hmm. up your entourage, maybe build a fort. Gosh knows what. I mean, like you said, watch a cutscene where your pirates get off, you know, your, your crew, and then they come back to the ship. It's just super... Ugh. It yeah, just and the, the social work. aspect is really an important part for a game like this because, I mean, that's the whole reason why Sea of Thieves has done so well because, in a sense, that's a game you can just hop on in with a group of friends and it becomes like an extension of a chat room at that point. Yeah, it's almost you, like someone you don't get told, any of that in this. It's almost like someone told Ubisoft that they really vibed with Assassin's Creed Odyssey and loved those open ship battles, you know? Because remember, at the end of those missions, you, they just magically drop you off the ship with a cutscene. And they go, well, <laughs> gamers vibed with this, then we could clearly get away with it in Skull and Bone. No, that is not the case. No. You know, it, it is a very fun <laughs> gameplay, but for $70, I am going to tell you for your value of the dollar here in the United States, it's not worth it right now at $70. If it goes down to close to 40 it's definitely worth pursuing, and I'm sure Ubisoft's got a lot of amazing things cooking up for the game, but for the fixed value that they want, it's a hard no, hard pass, pause. What about yourself, Henry? Yeah, I'd say it's a pause for me as well, considering, I mean, clearly you saw our thoughts, both of us, like, we just don't really vibe with what they have here. What they have here is not worth $70. I'd say probably not even worth $40 to be and honest. And even get for, this, Henry, and get this, get this. <laughs> sea of Thieves at one point on the PlayStation 5 over the weekend was the highest, you know, selling game, Sea of Thieves, which is yeah. an Xbox exclusive that just recently came to the yep. PS5. That's it's a niche very embarrassing. that hasn't and really been filled properly yet. Exactly. And then see if these started to drop a little bit once MLB 2K or 24 started to get released and people started buying the premium edition for $100, which that's just for <laughs> another story. Gosh, I can't believe people still do that. Wow. But, hey, you heard it from both Henrik the Wreck and I. It is a pause, but what are you gamers feeling? Are you going to be uh, traveling on the open sea? Or are you just going to uh, jump ships and enjoy another game? Let us know what's good. But again, who the hell spiked the rum? Because I need some of that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> More here left on Rage Quit Video Game Talk Show. What's good, listeners? Welcome to Patch Notes, where my co-host, Henrik the Wreck, and I discuss gaming news, industry talk, and so much more. Let's get it. Google researchers have developed a new AI system capable of generating playable worlds reminiscent of video games based on images and text prompts. And unlike ChatGPT Sora, which we covered a couple weeks back here live on Rage Quick, quit, yep, they refer Wait, to this Rage system. <laughs> I know, I was like... <laughs> You, come on, you got to get the name right, Chris. But hey, we did cover this a couple weeks ago. If you want to uh, visit that conversation, please do after the show. But unlike ChatGPT's Sora, they refer to this system as, quote, an actionable, controllable world model. So if you haven't seen any of the examples surrounding Genie AI, we got a video here for you, fam. It's funny, this might not seem very like, oh, whoa, mind blowing, because especially because the video ends up being a little bit blurry. <laughs> That's because of the limitation of this technology. Exactly. But it's a great start to something that could be really revolutionary. Yeah, big time, because Google's 
AI genie is trained on 200,000 hours of video gameplay to learn how to move characters in a consistent manner. And like Henrik the Wreck was suggesting, right now it can only produce one frame per second. So the PC lovers like Henrik the Wreck that need 120 frames per second, <laughs> not necessarily coming to your PC anytime soon, but it is very much an incredible milestone. And gamers were commenting all around this viral AI system. And the new one says, or comment that we got here is, New AI system development shocks the industry. Everyone is stunned everywhere. And that's a joke on numerous amount of AI people that spend their time <laughs> only speaking on topics Just of AI. Hyping up everything. <laughs> hyping up way over the board going, this is incredible. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting at home making your own realistic game and exploring it or making a two-hour movie for your own enjoyment? Would it be enjoying if you already knew the plot? Mm, I mean, maybe if you had the option to not know the plot. Ooh, plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> Can this be considered an upcoming threat to game developers? I know it can't do much now, but if they keep it at it, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> Imagine a procedurally generated dra uh, Dungeons & Dragons experience with a similar model in the future. What, we really going to be playing a 2D platformer of Dungeons & Dragons? Is that what you're suggesting, young man? <laughs> <laughs> man, I feel kind of numb by everything. When Dali, remember that's the photo generating text prompt, I was in awe and started playing around with it. When GPT-4 came out, I was in awe and started playing around with it and really thinking about what it means to be intelligent. It excited me and made me think about deep questions. Man, if you use it, okay, sorry, pause. If you use the GPT-4 for, you know, deep questions, abort the mission now. But let's continue. <laughs> Maybe you but, need therapy at that yeah, point. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 please, don't do deep questions <laughs> with GPT-4. <laughs> uh, anyways, but somehow I don't get that those kind of reactions anymore to the new stuff. Even though the new stuff is crazy, Sora is a great example. When it came out, my reaction was like, oh, that's crazy. But in a numb way, I don't think I'm prepared for what's coming at all. Get ready. The future's here. And last, <laughs> imagine being able to tell Genie to take an existing game and continue the story, create unlimited levels. Nice. So, Potentially something that modders could do but, in the future. You know, but, you know, Henrik, the most impressive thing about Genie is the AI's understanding of physics through hundreds of hours of unsupervised uh, training. So this is game changing. No, absolutely. I mean, even just to touch on the modding thing a bit, like we see already a little bit of AI in modding as is. Like we've seen it that there's some mods for Skyrim, for example, you can have conversations that go on forever with NPCs. Imagine, like that comment said, that instead of just conversations, you can go on full on like AAA quality quest lines with these NPCs that were not even written into the game to begin with. Yeah, this feels like uh, video game developers like favorite thing ever if they could find a way to control it uh and yeah. i feel like that was sort of hinted this week with electronic arts ceo and i'm blanking out on the gentleman's name sorry if you guys want to look it up you can do it on your own time <laughs> but he was kind of suggesting that you know he's like hey listen look like we cannot ignore the the effects of live service and ai and what the potential that can bring for ea and they're just wanting to really create a metaverse where you the gamers could build upon on their own games and i'm pretty darn sure that fortnite and roblox have already kind of started this momentum probably not yeah. at the pace that they really want it to be at this current juncture but you know knowing that they have you know equity stake partnership with disney for example that's gonna bring a lot of momentum pretty soon very fast for those uh, studio publishers but when you consider all this said and done you know you you did kind of reference it at the top henrik you know it, uh, you know compared to the 30 and 60 frames per second that is uh really required with a lot of modern day gamers one frames per second just isn't gonna do it right now <laughs> yeah but it's it's a start of something and we can only see it get better at this point you know, so I mean, true. It's all a matter of how long it'll take. It could be next year we might see 10 frames per second. Maybe yeah. we might not even see five, but 
the, the pace has really been picking up in, in terms of AI development. So at this point, anything could happen. Oh, it's so like. true. And I know like the main focus around Google's Genie AI has been around video games per se, but the Google researchers also found this to be an incredible milestone when it comes to robotic engineering. And why is that the case? Because considering other models like Sora, for example, you were required to uh, input actions in the training process. Again, they watched hundreds of thousands of hours of unsupervised, you know, training involving video game 2D platformers. And so the fact that they can just look at video footage alone and be able to train it to do actions is a very, very powerful tool. And what that can bring for robotics or Terminator in the future is, gosh, we'll see. We'll see what's new. <laughs> we were joking earlier that it wasn't the coming anywhere close. Now, but... <laughs> we live in the dystopian future of the Terminator movies. That's right. That's right. <laughs> hey, but let's go ahead and start switching topics because bang, 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 we got a debate. Man, Reddit's been got some awesome threads going on. Break it down. What's happening, Henrik? Yeah, so gamers online are debating on Reddit about the moment that ruined a good game. Yeah. With some sharing <laughs> hilarious mishaps and questionable design choices that turn their gaming experiences sour. Yeah, man. And we you have know, some comments. Yes, we do. <laughs> First one says Blizzard murdered Overwatch and then replaced it with Overwatch 2. All too true, honestly. <laughs> really? Is, was that truly the case? I, even if we went back, would the gameplay experience be that much better? It's not even just the gameplay experience. It's just the full package. The Overwatch full package. 2 is supposed to be an expansion on Overwatch 1, not necessarily a sequel, but more of like the big focus was the PvE content, which then <laughs> now they have canceled. So there's not even a reason for having a sequel. Kind of reminds just, you Other like... than, you know, changing their monetization. <laughs> well, think about it like a Metal Gear Solid, you know, when Snake was like rumored to be the protagonist and then wasn't <laughs> or oh, like Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or think about the likes of uh, Assassin's Creed 3, you know, where they just like randomly make you swap characters in the middle or Last of Us Part 2. You know, some people yeah. would say that that ruined a really good game, you know, because you're like, hey, hey, where's Allie? I don't want to play as Abby. She's mean. <laughs> I don't like her golf swing. She's got a really, she hits really well with an iron. <laughs> <laughs> the release of microtransaction loot box, the decision <sighs> to focus on Grand Theft Auto Online versus Grand Theft Auto 5. I think people are kind of forgetting that Grand Theft Auto Online was an expansion. Is that really what ruined a good game? Uh, the game's still living on 10 years from the release date. Yeah, but I mean, also, I see their comments here is more about maybe if they didn't focus as much on Grand Theft Auto Online, maybe there'd be another Grand Theft Auto game already. Mm, okay, okay, I, I see where you're going with that. Next comment that we got here is escort missions where the escort character is the slowest being in the world or where your proximity to them slows you down. <laughs> down I those like are the absolute oh, worst <laughs> those are the absolute worst guys i was just playing a game like that uh recently i feel like watchdog legions on a level had a mission like that mm. where you're like come on dude let's go let's <laughs> go i was just playing um uh the plague tale requiem also oh. a moment where you're trying to sneak by and you're going hey you little shit if you don't move a little bit faster i'm a i'm a, I'm a karate chop you through the screen <laughs> Insert game name, water level. Okay, so anything water involved, very yeah. much the case. <laughs> Notoriously, water levels are just not fun. There are some that have broken that uh, trope, but okay. a lot of them, you know, especially even going all the way back to like the most iconic water level the water temple and yes. of time i'm so glad you said everyone that everyone hated so that <laughs> <laughs> everybody couldn't get down with it so true oh wait wait we'll go back to the comment also the end boss fight of gears of war 2 yes we hear yeah. you and some people you know it's like uh, arkham asylum with batman one of my favorites when it comes to uh, a storyline but yes very lackluster kind of ending if you haven't if you don't know <laughs> You'll find out real soon when you go to play the game. Uh, next comment we got here is when Brutal Legend stops being an action game and starts being an RTS. This so I can't relate a, to. That, that is a niche title, but actually a good one. <laughs> Yes, until this happens. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really speak on it because I never played this game, but I feel your pain through the screen. And last, Mafia, 
dot, dot, dot. The racing level, so atrocious. And gosh, look at this throwback right here from this comment. Damn, I forgot about that one. I was going to say the practice driving in the game Driver. Does anybody remember Driver? That was the teen version of essentially Grand Theft Auto 3 back in the day? Or the yeah. RC airplanes in Grand Theft Auto San Andreas? Oh my gosh, anything RC airplanes was a pain in the ass. And you know, <laughs> while we're talking about San Andreas, does anybody remember that mission where you got to shoot down the drones on top of the rooftop? Oh, oh. my god, that was <laughs> horrendous does anybody else got a you know a, a, a moment that ruined a good video game can you think of one right now i can think of another one. Oh, uh, i love all the legend of zelda games in one way or another wind waker is one of the ones i grew up with but every time i go back and play it and i played through it recently every time i get to the triforce hunting uh a quest <laughs> line I'm just like, man, I want to put this game down. This is this is not fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I want to move on to something else. This is, I'm not vibing with it. I will bring it to something that's a bit more modern. Very fun storyline. But again, it, it, this we're, like the question says on screen, what moment ruined a good video game? I'll tell you, because they had an opportunity to upgrade the experience, but they didn't. Remember Spider-Man? And I'm going to mm -hmm. include Spider-Man 2. All the MJ missions. And I remember IGN sat down with the creator and told uh, all those gamers like myself complaining to go F off. But you know what? I'm going to tell him to respectfully F off. Did he ever consider, instead of making MJ the gal that should have been in the game, maybe it would have worked better if they put Gwen Stacy in. But then it would have actually made more sense that MJ comes across as super OP. Like, why is she, like, so... Like, you could be playing on hard mode and the missions are so freaking easy. That makes... No freaking sense. <laughs> yeah, Do you I've, feel I've me? I've seen, I've seen so many people that agree with you that, that just Come the Spider-Man games in general, like if they just cut out the MJ segments as a whole, the game would have been better. I mean, don't get games. me wrong. In the Spider-Man <laughs> two, and I won't say what happens, but you know the MJ. That's it's like, it's so cool, like visually and where it's going. But you're just going again, like just the fact that like when you do finally obtain an ability for MJ and all you can simply do is direct Spider-Man to go and you know handle the situation lame you had an <laughs> opportunity to do something really really cool insomniac if you're listening I I I'll join you in the next boardroom right we got our new it's, it's uh, employee you. for you right here I got right I got here. you don't worry about this whole Spider-Man <laughs> online thing that, that thing looks horrible by the way that would ruin <laughs> A good game. I don't know if anybody saw those trailers. Oh. Those looked horrendous. I'm like, thank God they're moving on. From another live service game. Another right? live service online <laughs> Spider-Man. It would be super lame. But if you need somebody in that writer's room and you got writer's block, trust me, you can call your boy Chris Collins. <laughs> My but number hey. is this, this, this. Yeah. I, I'm here till Thursday. <laughs> and if you need me to rage quit, I definitely can do that for you. But hey, do you feel like this is a good opportunity to uh, switch topics, Henrik? Yeah, yeah, what, what's going on with the Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator, Chris? Man, but let's really talk about Capcom on a level, and you just referenced it. You know, they are keenly aware of the immense anticipation surrounding Dragon's Dogma 2 releasing on March 22nd, and social media exploded with posts from players diving headfirst into the game's character creator, eager to get a jump start on their epic adventure and with your character uh carrying over into the full game you the gamer right now can download the free character creator tool available on steam xbox and the ps5 so if you want to get a head start i totally understand because when you're making those characters i don't know about you henrik but it's <laughs> like getting a pre-game warm-up without breaking a sweat unless you like to count the stress of choosing from a ridiculous mustache to an epic beard you have the opportunity to kind of sit on it but we're here to show some of the amazing amazing characters which you know the reason I think this is so awesome, it's pure marketing genius. Look at this. I mean, Timothy Shamala from Dune, it looks exactly like him. Yeah, where's the Dune 2 movie bucket now? Someone needs to mod that into the game as a weapon <laughs> or so the that pod. it can go alongside <laughs> Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> like your little companion walking by. <laughs> that would be yeah. so funny. You know, you. I'm kind of seeing a little bit of Liza P2. A little bit of Liza P in this. A image, little bit, but, yeah. You yeah. Know, this is pretty cool. But, you know, you're going to clearly know who this is. Kratos. Boy. Wow. Boy. 
that looks spot freaking on. Yeah. That that's incredible. now the perfect companion for this would be his kid. <laughs> yes. And again, this is a Capcom game. We are not playing a Santa Monica Studios game. Incredible. Next one we mm -hmm. got here is oh god, I'm oh my right god. Now. This looks like uh <laughs> when Nintendo uh loses their IP of Pokemon, like we saw with uh Steamboat Willie. <laughs> is this what <laughs> Pikachu's gonna look like in the next horror movie? <laughs> yep, give it like 20 years. We'll oh, see it. God. Oh god. <laughs> hey, but everybody needs a, a shaggy in their life. I like this one. A little bit of a different approach yeah. to Shaggy. This, you know, this okay. one I could actually see myself maybe doing. Yeah, I, I can see it. It looks a little bit of like a DreamWorks Illumination Studios kind of ask, uh, you know, the character development around the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. I see it, ah. but then I don't see it. But it's yeah, pretty it's, darn it's close. Uncanny almost. <laughs> yeah, on a level, you, you know, with the, with the red lips, I can see where people are going, and I love that to Toby Maguire in Spider Man Three. Holy always, Maguire. he never dies; he doesn't go <laughs> away. Like I don't know why. Now, where's the emote to have him dancing like he does in the movie? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I, I see that hair, and I just immediately start thinking about Hawthorne Heights, <laughs> Ohio is the lover. And no, I will not <laughs> yeah. start singing live on air. <laughs> but then again, you know, you see a lot of these crazy runner-ups here you know you see avatar you see the funny meme around squidward i'm looking at yep. walter, walter white, white devil may cry five uh Leon elden ring millennia right resident <laughs> yeah. evil you know two i mean so people have gotten very very creative and you know this just it feels like pure marketing genius and so henrik it's like these you know character creators are in video games are nothing new they have allowed us to do very unorthodox avatars within gaming but only in the age of social media has this feature become a means for a wider discussion and so my first reaction when i started seeing a lot of this amazing and trust me we couldn't showcase all of them because we'd be on for another hour yeah <laughs> but if you want to have some fun go on reddit go on twitter you're definitely going to find a lot of awesome awesome adaptions of some of legendary characters and more but can you imagine what grand theft auto 6 is going to provide for us and if they mm. don't and if they don't will th will this be something that gamers will come after grand theft auto 4 i'm not sure if that'd be you know something that people would get upset about them not having in grand theft auto but if they did put that in there i think it would be something that could be a great way to get people invested in their online character because it's definitely going to be for more of the online multiplayer the single player you have that character that's already designed for that campaign but mm. just imagine you know instead of just the characters that you have now in grand theft auto 5 online just imagine the detail like this in Grand Theft Auto 6. Yeah, I just see like a lot of people spending so much money on, you know, Fortnite characters and etc. and Apex. And it's just like you would think that gamers would really want this next kind of feature when it comes to the newly adapted Grand Theft Auto Online. But then again, we won't know until the game comes out three years, five years, ten years. 25 years yeah. from now <laughs> so, <laughs> we, yeah, so, we, so we really don't know and so again we just want to say as a final note that the character data created in this free tool can be transferred into the base game of dragon's dogma 2 so if you want to get a head start creating your character and your main pawn go ahead do it for yourself have some fun and Especially also since this is a game that you'll want to go and like spend an hour maybe more creating a character so you know why they want to do that Henry? Pretty getting ahead on it you know why they want to do that because this game <laughs> has that? a lot of drama within the mm. only the single save slot like yep. so you can't yep. have multiple characters so you have to really think long and hard about who you're going to be committed with <laughs> for mm -hmm. hours on end so that's kind of a point and then there was other people that were referencing that it was a little bit of a bummer that you can't add short people into the game so sorry henry ah. you you don't meet the threshold for the e-ticket right <laughs> oh wait, wait. Chris, no, I'm joking. i know I'm just joking. you're <laughs> much taller than me but i'm not that short you're okay? not that small <laughs> <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you heard it. Get a head start on Dragon's Dogma too. But hey, let's go more into some industry talk because this has kind of ruffled some feathers with Xbox gamers who really 
Literally last week, we were just talking about how this is their opportunity, golden opportunity to really shine and excel in the year 2024. But some people are kind of skeptical for what's to come and what they do need to do. So break it down. Yeah, the video game console market appears to be at a critical juncture. With the Xbox struggling in the console war, Sony hinting at the PS5 nearing the midpoint of its life cycle due to missed tar sales targets, and uncertainty, uncertainty looming over the release of the Nintendo Switch 2, whenever that'll come out, yeah, uh, right. this has led to growing concerns about the future of consoles with Peter Moore convinced that Microsoft is discussing right now whether Xbox consoles have a future. And so what Peter Moore said is, and what are we doing? Well, we're not in the living room anymore, said Moore. We're back in the bedroom with our YouTube influencers, our TikTok creators, and it's about content on demand. Gen Z is coming through and they're going. Why do I need to spend 400 or 500 bucks on a bespoke piece of gaming hardware when I've got my smartphone? Or I got my PC or my Mac, and I can do things there with a pretty decent controller. And why should I care what Peter Moore thinks? Well, as a former president of Sega America, Peter Moore was in the room when Sega killed the Dreamcast yeah. and went third party. Then, as the former boss of Xbox, he oversaw Xbox 360, containing with everything from the Red Ring of Death debacle to even questioning in 2007 whether the 360 would be the last generation of console gaming. So they've been saying this for a while. That's true. <laughs> but we do have gamers who were quickly flooding the internet with the following comments. Yes, we do. And so the first one we got here is, not everyone wants a damn computer to play a video game. Console makes life easy and simple. Press and play. Xbox shot themselves in the foot by being so intertwined with PC. If you have a PC, PC uh, a PlayStation, and bonus Switch, you're set with gaming. Okay, how the hell does that make any sense? <laughs> Let's have every single gaming console, which is just as much as money as buying a PC. And I'm not here to defend the PC gamers. I'm just saying that comment sounds a bit atrocious. Okay, moving yeah. on. <laughs> it's an ex-employee, while Phil Spencer is still actively telling everyone that they want to keep making consoles this sounds like something that was talked about years ago and is resurfacing or he you know phil spencer is really good at calling bluff <laughs> you ever thought about that it's true they said this for almost 20 years now and guess what we still have them. Everyone climbing on Microsoft seems to forget that they just acquired like five of the biggest game developers in the marketplace. Sony may have won the console wars with more sales, but completely lost the developer war. Pretty soon, if not already, Sony's going to start paying Microsoft just so they have games to play on the PlayStation. Microsoft even admitted this when they said they were losing the console wars back in 2011-ish. Giga brain move from Microsoft, to be honest. And last, consoles do, Xbox doesn't. So very, very intriguing to see how like it's very split within the debate about whether the console war or is that even a thing right now. And so mm -hmm. are we at a point where Microsoft le leveraging Azure, which is their cloud platform, is ready to fully yeah. embrace cloud gaming with a single click? Well, I've believe there's still a lot of gamers out there that would like to have a console and even a physical copy of whatever game they're trying to play. And a lot of this is because of the whole um, ownership debate, because even recently, uh, I think believe this past week, uh, there was kind of a wake up call for some PS5 owners where they downloaded a demo for a game that's not even out yet called Stellar Blade. And the demo was not supposed to be out on the store. It was a mistake. But people who downloaded it then realized when the company realized it was a mistake and they pulled it off of the store, they also found that if their console was connected to the internet, they were no longer able to play that demo, even though it was already downloaded. Mm. Which says something to all the digital storefronts. That means that literally you could buy a $60, $70 game from the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store. And these console manufacturers have the ability 
to revoke access to these games just because you're not connected to the, to the internet or just because the game gets pulled. But does reason, that surprise you know? anybody? We always see with like blockchain technology when it comes to cryptocurrency that people are getting fleeced and, you know, getting their money stolen or, you know, the cloud goes down and off and on. It's not going to be perfect always in the beginning, but come on. It's definitely with the Gen Z. And like, I hear people going, you know, like some of these uh, comments that we, we were showcasing live on air, you know, going, hey man, you know, they, they said that 20 years ago, nothing's going to change now. Do you even remember like 2007? Yeah, I remember when Peter Moore showed up with his Halo 2 tattoo and he was trying to leverage that, you know, hey, listen, look, you know, Xbox is going to be that dominant form of consoles. I, I think they need to realize they got to dial things back because in 2007, we had the iPod, okay? iPod! <laughs> we didn't have an iPhone, we had an iPod. And now we're moving into a you know, crazy frontier when it comes to 2024, where even the likes of Sling TV, for example, they are a live TV streaming service, has introduced a collection of over 10 free video games available on the Amazon Fire TV and Android TV users. So clearly... Sling TV, for example, sees the potential in packaging live TV with video games. And so why is it that everybody else is trying to jump on the curve when it comes to providing video games on your smart TV, your mobile devices, including PC, but everywhere else, you know, some people feel like the console is still the niche. Have we not forgot? It was always said like two or three weeks ago that Phil Spencer said that he's going to copy PlayStation and do a console where there's no CD-ROM. <laughs> Okay, so why well, would you even I mean, offer that if cloud gaming and digital purchases are not going to be a thing of the future? Well, maybe some part of it is that like why people want consoles is because they think, oh, if you get rid of the consoles, the only alternative I have is either cloud gaming or I move to a different console, like either the other console, if it's still alive or just PC in general. But when people look at things like PC, then you're looking at a huge investment compared to what a console costs, probably double, I'd say, for a decent computer that will last you for a good amount of time. And a lot of people just don't want cloud gaming. But why does I mean, everybody yes, always get so fixated the future, towards PC, but I don't think though. people want it. Why is everybody so fixated towards PC? It's always PC, PC, PC when it comes to these like cloud gaming discussions or debates you know like people always throw out the window that smart tvs are here and they're definitely providing you you know on these eight it's not gonna be 8k but they're showcasing that they can you know bring in the powerhouse to be able to stream a video game to your 8k tv at a pretty decent high definition quality so if it's a simple clip and you can you know stream things so fast like i'm doing with the ps plus why would you want to, you know, buy a $70 plus game when I could just pay you $15 or $20 a month to get hundreds of video games, instant demand. And I don't even have well, to carry a... the big ass device console to the next TV. I could just log in with my account. That, that, that is if the, the game you want to play is even on that service though, because maybe you want to play a game that just came out and oh, oh man. The game I want to play that just came out is not on the service I'm paying for. Henrik, it's not that hard when you get a pair. Henrik, it's not that hard when you get Paramount Plus and you want to watch Halo TV. That season ends. <laughs> you delete, you know, your account. It's not that hard, right? You know, you got Amazon Luna. You know, you got Navita that's got their own cloud gaming service. Uh, have we not forgotten, like the comment just said, you know, Activision Blizzard basically being bought out by Microsoft? I mean, that's essentially there. And then also consider this. We referenced this last week, right? Toys for Bob leaving Activision Blizzard to go indie. Why would they do that after all these years? You would think that that would be such a legendary milestone for Toys for Bob to be partnershiped up with Microsoft. Well, maybe indie developers are starting to realize that they can start to broker their own deals and they don't need these major, you know, publishers like Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo to start brokering our deals just so we can get our game on your console because it's going to be essentially available everywhere. Or maybe, you know, they just realized, hey, maybe people don't want to have subscriptions because think about it. You have ooh, so I, many ooh, things. I, ooh, that, I would, I would, I would beg so that they things, do. With Gen so Z? many things that you're paying for monthly. You're so paying Gen for, Z's buying physical copies? Gen I'm Z's not, are buying DVDs? Saying physical they're buying copies. I'm CDs? saying like buying the digital copy of a game outright versus having to play 
the game through a subscription service because have we forgot you have that so many things you're, you're paying you were part time at Best Buy. We just killed the <laughs> physical aisle. Yes, I, I <laughs> we, saw it disappear. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you were probably asked to help remove the physical items, right? <laughs> so, like, where are we going with this? I mean, and even Xbox but, but like, they, killed you have, their you have whole Netflix, division. You have, you have Spotify. You have all these services. <laughs> you and multiple for some forms of media that you're having to pay for you're like you're definitely not just playing paying for netflix if you want to watch everything well, because clearly it doesn't netflix have everything thought, well netflix and rockstar uh you know studios they, they were or rockstar games they were saying that they're finding this to be a major benefit having a lot of their old grand theft auto games join the netflix and they even spoken out recently going hopefully we can continue this partnership because i think they even realize how powerful this is going to be going in the future especially you know they're going to be a live service game they're going to be want, wanting to be on every single platform because they want to find the best opportunity to gather your money and they understand not everybody has the money to be wanting to pay for a ps5 not everybody wants to invest in an xbox series xs matter of fact the nintendo switch 2 doesn't sound like much of an upgrade as of yet until we find out more information but from what we're hearing with rumors really you're gonna be paying a full Here's price a big for the question switch 2? as well chris Think yes. about how many big AAA titles get released every year. How is it going to make sense, mono, like money wise, profits wise, to put all these AAA titles? Say if the consoles died tomorrow and we weren't able to even use the ones that are out anymore, and all the future AAA titles that are coming out for the rest of the year were going straight to subscription services, how would it make sense, mon like monetization wise? To put those on these streaming services because they're only paying like what 15 20 for a subscription service yet opposed to how much are triple a games costing now well, 70 dollars and, and this is an easy answer very very easy answer think about ghost of Tsushima that just recently went on the pc did they release that on day one on the pc for everybody to get on all consoles no, I mean, they're still going to have these first party exclusives where they're going to try to gear you to go towards their console or they're going to gear you to go towards their own cloud gaming service. They're definitely going to provide that for, you know, hey, it's only going to be on our little Sony cloud. So if you want to be able to play Ghost of Tsushima 2, you better be subscribed to us <laughs> because you're not going to be able to get that game with Amazon Luna for another two years. I feel like that's how they're going to be brokering deals in the future. And that's why, again, that's why I feel truly that indie developers even the likes i was even seeing that the doom creator is now creating his own indie studio remember we were reported uh just recently blanking out on his uh freaking studio company but remember the rockstar co-creator mm -hmm. he just recently yeah. left his studio company to go and do his own thing why do people feel like they can all start doing their own niches now and just leave some of these major you know studios and developers there's a lot well, to think about lots and lots maybe to it's think the year of the indie game you know, it, it's starting to look like that on a level. But then again, we will truly see if Microsoft makes a move towards cloud gaming and whether Phil Spencer's actually bluffing us all. <laughs> but man, this has been such an amazing ride. We can't thank you, the gamers, enough for always tuning in live prime time Wednesday night at six o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And if you guys have not as of yet, Go ahead and like, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss what's cooking on my end, as well as Henrik the Rack. Yeah, go like, comment, subscribe, see what I'm cooking, because you'll definitely like it. It's been a blast. I appreciate you guys always tuning on in, and I will see you guys later tonight. And Henrik the Rack, we'll see you next week live. I'll see Wednesday, you in the chat. Six yeah. o'clock. <laughs> All right, fam. <laughs> we'll see you guys real soon. Peace. See ya.